Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture again. In the previous classes, we have calculated the moment etc about the forces that were concentrated. So basically, they were applied at particular points, but there are many cases wherein the load or the force can be distributed across the members. So today, we are going to uh, discuss about the beams and the forces which are distributed. So first, let us see what is beam. So, we are going to use the following definition of the beam. This is a member which supports a transverse load. So, let us look at the example. So, let us say I have a pin and I have a roller support and on this I put a beam and I apply a vertical force. Now, this vertical force or the transverse force that is supported by the beam, so therefore this qualify to be called a beam and this is the example of a simple beam. Similarly, we can have a configuration like this. Wherein inside the wall, we insert the beam and you apply a force. So, this is the example, this is again a beam because it is supporting a vertical force. This is the example of a cantilever beam. Now, think of the following situation. So, again we have a pin support here and you have a roller support there. And you have this beam, but now you are applying the force in this way. So, this is the same example, but the forces are applied differently. Here, the force is transverse and in this direction and in this case the force is horizontal. So, therefore, this is not a beam. Okay. Now, you will find various cases wherein all the support reactions that are acting, it cannot be calculated and there will be some cases where the support reactions can be calculated. So, if the support reaction can be calculated by the method of statics. By the method of statics, I mean using the equilibrium condition, then the beam is statically determinate beam. And as I said, you will also see various cases wherein there are various support reactions. Okay. So, in that case, if I cannot calculate all the support reactions, then it will be statistically indeterminate beam. So, a beam is statically indeterminate. if the beam has more supports than needed to provide the equilibrium. Okay. And in this case, you will not be able to calculate all the support reaction. Let me give you an example. So, for example, let us take this beam and this beam is held like that 
and you apply a force on it. Here there are six unknown okay you have the x and y reaction and you will have a moment. So, there are three unknown over here similarly three unknown on the other side. So, there are six unknown okay and uh, you know all the unknowns cannot be calculated given this information. So, therefore, this is statically indeterminate beam. Similarly, let us look at this example. So, in this example there are four unknown, three unknown over here and one vertical reaction over here. So, there are four unknown and you will see in the examples that you know such kind of uh, cases uh, all the reaction forces cannot be calculated. So, therefore, both are statically indeterminate beams. Now, let us look at the cases wherein the load is not uniformly distributed. So, we are looking at uh, the distributed load. So, this means that the loading intensity it varies along the length of the beam. So, for example, you have a beam and uh, if you look at the loading, so it has you know some variation. So, let us say this axis is x axis, then the loading will be a function of x. So, to calculate the total loading, what you have to do is you have to find out the total load. So, let us say this is dx, then total load can be find out by taking the integral of this w as a function of x. So, total load is let us say r, this will be w time d x and where this r is going to act well it is going to act at the center of mass of this system and this resultant r it will be located at the centroid of this area that we have. Let us say x is the coordinate of this centroid, then I can find out this x bar and it will be integral x w dx divided by r. So, therefore, this distributed force that we have I can replace it by a concentrated force and uh, it will act at a distance of x bar and its value will be r. So, this whole system I can replace by this. Now, note that the distributed force can be reduced to 1 or more equivalent forces or equivalent concentrated forces. What do I mean by that? So, what I can do is in the above example I can take this part and calculate the total load and at what distance it is going to act. 
So, let us say it is going to act at a distance x 1 and then I can take this part and calculate at what distance it is going to act. So, let us say it is r 2 and it is going to act at a distance of x 2. So, the same system either I can replace by this or I can replace by that. Let us look at the first problem and the question statement is following. Determine the reactions at the supports A and B for the beam loaded as shown. So, to find out the support reactions, first let us look at the free body diagram of this. Let us say this is x axis, this one is y axis. Now, first let us calculate the total resultant of these loads. So, total resultant R will be, so there are two triangles which are equivalent. So, therefore, its area will be 2 times 1 by 2 w naught into the length is L by 2. So, this is half w naught L. So, that much force is going to act. Now, where it is going to act? Again, from the inspection, you can see that it is going to act at L by 2. So, x bar is L by 2. So, therefore, at point A, so first of all, it is a pin uh, support. So, therefore, it cannot support the moment it can only support the A y and A x forces. At point B, we have a roller support. So, their force, force B y is going to act. Now, R is going to act at L by 2. This length is of course, L and this is R equal to half w naught l. So, this makes the free body diagram of this. Now, to find out a y and b y, let us take the moment about a first. So, if you take the moment about a, then a x and a y will go away. So, we will have b y into l equal to half w naught l into l by 2 and this gives you b y equal to w naught l divide by 4 and I can also have summation f y equal to 0. This gives you a y equal to 1 by 4 w naught l. And uh, since there are no forces acting in the x direction, so therefore, summation f x equal to 0, we have only one force a x and it has to be balanced. So, therefore, a x will be 0. So, here we have replaced the entire distributed load by a single force. We can also solve this problem by considering two triangles and uh, we can replace this system by two concentric loads. So, let us do this problem in the following manner. Let us consider this triangle and then let us consider that triangle and let us replace it by two concentric load, let us say R 1 and R 2. So, for that, let me make the free body diagram. So, we have the x axis and the y axis. Now, this was point A, this is point B. At B, we have a roller support. So, therefore, force B y is going to act at A there will be a force A x and A y. Now, this is the center at a distance of L by 2. Now, the area of the first triangle is 1 by 2 into L by 2 into W naught. So, this becomes w naught l by 4. 
So, W naught L by 4 force is going to act at a distance of L by 3 because this is 2 times or 2 by third multiplied by L by 2. So, this will be L by 3. So, at a distance of L by 3, I have the first load W naught L by 4 at a distance of L by 3. Similarly, from here at a distance of L by 3, we have the second concentrated load. So, this is the free body diagram. Now, to calculate B y, let us take the moment about A, summation M A equal to 0. So, we have B y into L equal to W naught L by 4 times the distance L by 3 plus W naught L by 4 into 2 L by 3 because this distance will be 2 L by 3. So, from here we get B y equal to W naught L by 4 and I can have summation F y equal to 0. This gives me A y equal to 1 by 4 W naught L. So, alternatively we have solved this problem by considering two concentrated load instead of one. Now, let us look few more questions on this concept. So, here the problem statement is following. Determine the reaction at the support A of the loaded cantilever beam. So, let us look at this problem. Here, this W is given as W naught plus k x to the power 3. Here, W naught and k are some constant which can be determined by the boundary conditions that we have. So, for example, if you look at x equal to 0, at x equal to 0, W is 1000 Newton per meter. So, let us put that in the above equation. You will immediately see W is nothing but 1000. Now, at x equal to 8, we have W equal to 2024. Let us put that in equation number 1. So, we have 2024 equal to 1000 plus k into 8 to the power 3. So, we have 1024 equal to k into 8 to the power 3. This gives us k equal to 2. Let us put in equation number 1. Therefore, we have W equal to 1000 plus 2 into x to the power 3. So, this is how the load is varying. Now, to find out how much the load is, so R for that we have W dx. So, R will be integral and the x varies from 0 to 8. W is 1000 plus 2 x to the power 3 dx. So, this will be 1000 x plus x to the power 4 divided by 2 and let us put the limit 0 to 8 and this gives us 1 double 0 5 0 Newton. So, this much concentrated load is going to act, but where it is going to act? So, for that let us find out the centroid of this. So, x bar will be x w dx divided by r. So, it will be 1 over 1 double 0 5 0 integral 0 to 8 1000 x plus 2 x to the power 4 dx and this can be calculated. It will be 4.49 meter. Now, with this let us make the free body diagram. So, we have the x axis, 
the y axis at point A this beam is inserted inside the wall. So, therefore, it will also support the moment. So, let us take the moment in the anti clockwise and then you know its sign will determine whether it is correct or not. We have A x, we have A y. Now, R is going to act at a distance of 4.49 from point A and uh, its value is 10050 Newton. So, this is the free body diagram of that and this is of course, 8 meter. Now, to calculate M A, let us take the moment about A. So, if you take the moment about A, then M A comes out to be 45100 Newton meter because you multiplied 10050 multiplied by 4.49 and it is 45100 Newton meter. Now, let us do the force balance in the y direction and uh, this gives you A y equal to 10050 Newton. And, uh, since there are no fo force to balance A x. So, therefore, A x will be 0. Now, let us look at this problem statement. Determine the force and moment reaction. at the support A of the built in beam which is subjected to the sine wave load distribution. So, since over here the distribution is in the form of sine wave, let us see if this is the correct function to represent the loading. Let us first check at the boundaries if this is correct. So, at x equal to L, we know that W is equal to 0. Let us see if this function correctly represent this. Now, over here if I put x equal to L, then I have sin pi and uh, sin pi is nothing but 0. So, therefore, this is correct. Now, at x equal to L by 2 from the figure, I know that the loading has to be maximum w naught. Now, in this formula again if I put x equal to L by 2, then I have sin pi by 2 which is 1. So, therefore, this is w naught. So, therefore, this is the correct representation for the weight distribution. Now, let us calculate the total weight. So, total r will be 0 to L and w dx. So, w is w naught sin pi x divided by L dx and the integral of sin is minus cos. So, this will be minus w naught L by pi cos pi by L x and the limits are from 0 to L and this will be 2 w naught L divided by pi. So, this much load will be there. Now, let us find out where it will be. Now, from the inspection only we can find out that it will be at x equal to L by 2 is just by inspection or you can calculate the x bar by the formula that we have discussed earlier. 
So, therefore, the free body diagram of this is we have the x axis, the y axis and uh, at point A since it is a built in support there will be A x, A y and it will also support a moment let us call it M A and at x equal to L by 2 we have the force R equal to 2 w naught l divided by pi. Now, to calculate m a and a y, let us take the moment about a. So, summation m a equal to 0. This gives you m a equal to w naught l square divided by pi and let us take summation f y equal to 0. So, this gives you a y equal to 2 w naught l by pi and summation f x equal to 0 obviously gives you a x equal to 0. Now, let us look at one more problem and the problem statement is following. Neglect the mass of the beam. compute the reactions at A and B. So, to solve this problem, let us first make the free body diagram of this. So, let us say this is the x axis, this one is the y axis at a distance of 3 meter, we have a 2 kilo Newton force and uh, at a distance of 3 meter from this 2 kilo Newton force we have a couple this is 12 kilo Newton and uh, then we have this distributed force. So, let us first calculate how much is the distributed force. So, R will be 1 by 2 into 6 into 1. So, this will be 3 kilo Newton and uh, this force 3 kilo Newton is going to act as at one third of 6 meter which is 2 meter from point B. Okay. So, let us put that 3 kilo Newton force over here. Now, let us look at the reaction forces. At point A, we have a roller support. So, therefore, a force A y is going to act in the y direction and uh, at B, we have a pin support. So, therefore, forces will be B x and B y and this whole distance is 12 meter. So, this completes the free body diagram. Now, to find out B y, let us first take the moment about A. So, if I take the moment about A, then B x will be 0, A y will be 0 and uh, couple is a free vector. So, therefore, it will be 2 into 3 this force plus 12 plus b y into 12 equal to 3 into 10 because this distance is 10. So, this gives us b y into 12 equal to 12 therefore, b y equal to 1 kilo Newton. Now, obviously, b x will be 0 because summation f x should be 0 and this gives you b x equal to 0. Now, summation f y equal to 0 will give you a y plus b y equal to 3 minus 2. And b y is 1. 
so therefore a y will be 0. With this let me stop here, see you in the next class, thank you.